Well, women certainly made their presence felt both inside and outside of Parliament House yesterday. I think it's a real wake-up call to him and the government on how they're dealing with this issue. And I think yesterday his speech, he was basically on autopilot. Just out the front, is he tone deaf as Anthony Albanese is saying? It seemed eerily quiet around Parliament House this morning after thousands of protesters descended on the building yesterday. But inside, MPs were taking stock of just what had happened. Some coalition MPs quietly acknowledged that the government may have appeared not to be listening. Though senior ministers, including the Minister for Women, Maurice Payne, this morning, still seemed not to have quite read the Minister? proverbial room. Do you think that it was a bad look to not attend the Women's March yesterday? We have offered a meeting with the Prime Minister and myself to the organisers of the march, and that offer stands. The events that sparked the wave of anger and outrage that built into yesterday's rallies around Australia started here in Parliament House. And while it has unleashed much more widespread anger, what happens to address what is now widely described as a toxic culture in our political system becomes something of a litmus test and potential beacon for the rest of the community. As the Prime Minister himself said last month. The Parliament should be setting the standard. But some weeks on, there are major concerns among staffers about how the inquiry into the workplace at Parliament House will be run. The concern is whether the identity of people speaking to the inquiry will be protected. The inquiry, to be conducted by Sex Discrimination Commissioner Kate Jenkins, is subject to both the Freedom of Information Act and the Archives Act. Jenkins is understood to be very aware of the issue and staffers of major parties spoken to by 7.30 appreciate that the Commissioner wants it to be a frank and fearless report. The concern, though, is not just about repercussions in current jobs, but about how exposure may affect life after politics. Political staffers come and go out of jobs in the media, the public service, lobbying and the corporate sector. They fear they may still face retribution, for example as lobbyists, when they interact with the political system. The inquiry therefore runs the risk of being neutered by a lack of people coming forward to tell their stories. I did have a call yesterday um, from somebody asking whether uh, they should go forward um, and speak to Kate Jenkins. Um, uh, I've encouraged them to. I think they should. Um, but I do think we need to build in and make sure there is proper protection for them. Bullying is a much more widespread, if related, manifestation of a workplace obsessed with power, and it particularly affects women. The problems in the current system are illustrated by events in one minister's office two and a half years ago, which have become somewhat legendary. Kate Johnson has had a long and illustrious career as a staffer for coalition governments. In July 2018, she was appointed the Chief of Staff in the office of the then aged care minister, Ken Wyatt, an office which seemed to have a staffing problem. Have any staff indicated to the department or outside council that they have left the minister's office because of workplace bullying? The Department of Finance subsequently reported back that between February 2012 and October 2018, there had been a total of seven formal investigations into claims of bullying and harassment in Mr Wyatt's office. According to Kate Johnson, she was sacked after lodging five of the bullying complaints with the Department of Finance about a staffer on behalf of more junior staff, and she's been unable to secure a job in government since. Her subsequent attempts to access the department's report into her complaints via Freedom of Information have been thwarted, even though the minister who sacked her did get the report. The department said the release of the information would have a detrimental impact on the trust that finance has worked hard to develop and nurture with employees under the MOPS Act. The people who are asked questions give a guarantee of, uh, given a guarantee of privacy and they sign secrecy agreements. Minister Wyatt's office told 7.30 it would not comment on staff matters and said the matter had already been addressed. A survey released last month by the Commonwealth Public Sector Union found more than three quarters of staffers surveyed did not believe the Department of Finance would support them if they reported serious workplace incidents. And the differing standards of protection provided to those who complain about bad behaviour shows just why the confidence in the system seems to be at rock bottom. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.